what worked on social media, specifically Facebook, back in 2009 through 2013, it doesn't work so well now. And if you want something to change, you have to change something you're doing. Welcome to the Network Marketing Made Simple Podcast. I am Scott Aaron, and each and every week, I am going to come to you with simple, short, and powerful tactics and tips on what you can do each day, each week, each month, and each year to grow your network marketing business, income, and team. And just remember, network marketing is not easy but it can be made easy with simple steps to bring you the success that you truly deserve. Welcome to episode 40 of the Network Marketing Made Simple podcast. But before I get into today's content, if you are a network marketer and you've been listening to this or you are a first-time listener, welcome, and you are looking to up-level your business, your mindset, your organizational skills, your lead generation capabilities, and your bank account, all of that can be accomplished on LinkedIn. If you go to my website, www.scottaaron.net, fill out the form for a free 15-minute discovery call with me where we can learn more about each other and how we can benefit from working together. So in today's episode, we're going to be talking about three things that used to work on Facebook that people are still doing six years later. Back in 2013, these things did work, but they're still doing them now, expecting them to work, but they're not. And this is not to say that anyone is doing anything wrong, but if anyone stays up to date on all of the changes to the algorithm and algorithm, and they stay up to date on everything that goes on with social media, you will know that you absolutely need to use each platform differently. So what I'm going to go over with you guys today are three things that have changed and three things that you can do to absolutely make those things better. So number one, what I see a lot of people still doing is liking and commenting on each other's posts. If you're on the same team in network marketing now back in 2013, you know, even back 2009, 2010, even up through 2015, That was great because that worked in favor of the algorithm drawing people into your post because Facebook rewarded people that got a lot of engagement. But the way that the algorithm switched is it still rewards you for getting that activity. But the way that the algorithm kicks in on the back end is that one, it rewards the people that are getting things most visible, but two, it's going to then couple that into changing your newsfeed to those that are liking and commenting on your stuff and vice versa. So if the only people that you are liking and commenting on are the ones on your team, and those are the only people that are commenting back to you, guess what your newsfeed is going to look like? That's correct. Nothing but your team and they're already in your opportunity. So you can't even recruit them into your business. So you should still support your team, still like, still comment, still do all of those things. But the most important people that you should be liking and commenting on are the ones that aren't in your business. All of the friends that you have on Facebook and all of social media that aren't in your business, those are the ones that need the most support. Because if you start liking and commenting on their stuff, you're going to start to appear in their newsfeed and vice versa. And you know what? That might lead to a conversation. But if you're only liking and commenting on people that are already in your opportunity, how do you expect to bring new people in? So number one, continue to like and support your team, but continue to like and support everybody else as well. Number two, before and afters. Now, before and afters back in the day, I would do about five different before and afters a week. I mean, literally compulsively posted before and afters because I thought the more that people saw the before and afters, the better it was. But again, the way that it's set up, number one, 
the only people that were liking and commenting on my before and after were the people on my team, so I wasn't getting any new engagement. But number two, what I realized, the transformation that people care about most in my network are the people that are connected to me and my transformation. So think about this. Who's going to care more about your transformation? And who's going to care about more about someone else's transformation? So if I was to post my transformation, whether that's physical, emotional, spiritual, my network, the people that are not in my opportunity that that are really interested in what I'm doing are the ones that are going to engage the most. But that same group of friends that I have on Facebook and I post a picture of Steve whoever, why would they engage with that? What relatability do they have to someone that they don't know? And that's nothing. So the best engagement that you can get from a before and after is your own. And it doesn't always have to be physical. It can be emotional. It could be spiritual. It can be relationship wise. There are so many different types of transformations that you can share with your network about what's happened. Someone posted the other day that they've personally develop themselves into a more positive human being because of the journey they've been on in network marketing. That is a type of transformation. So it always isn't related to the product and the physicality of the transformation. But again, if you're going to share a transformation, make sure that you're sharing yours because those are the transformations that the people outside of your network are going to best respond to. And number three, Product launch pictures. So every season, companies will come out with seasonal flavors or new products. And the easiest thing for people to do is to scroll on Facebook, find someone in their opportunity that's already posted about it, save the photo to their camera roll, and then repost it as they're the ones that have found it. Now, the fact of the matter is that is the lazy way to do things. And what I can tell you from personal experience is that that's what I used to do because I wanted to do things as quickest and efficiently as possible, but it's not quick and it's not efficient and it's actually not even genuinely authentic because you're using someone else's stuff. So if you're going to do a product launch picture, make your own, you know, do something funny. I remember seeing a video that, Rob and Kim Murgatroyd did on Facebook with their daughter Sophia and Rob you know did a video he walks into the room and he goes man I can really use some birthday cake right now and she's like daddy I have some birthday cake and he goes yeah but maybe I should have a birthday cake shake and she goes no you should have some birthday cake and he goes okay I really want some birthday cake and she took a little piece of cake and she smashed it in his face and it was just a little parody video but it was different than just posting a picture about Hey, my company's got a new shake coming out. You should go get it. That worked back in the day. If you're going to send that kind of picture post to someone, then I would send it to someone that is already on your program, someone that's already using the products and send a personal message, send an email, send a text. Don't put it on your personal timeline. Do something a little bit different. Because what worked in 2013 and before that is not what's working now. So again, three things that were working in 2013 that aren't working now, but you can still do, but in a different way. Number one, don't just like and comment on just your team stuff. Like and comment on everyone else's stuff. Number two, before and afters. It's okay to share someone else's, but your network cares most about yours. And number three, when your company does have a new product launch, do something different. Don't just save the picture and post it just like anyone else. Bring some originality to your network and what you're doing. So guys, I hope you found this content helpful. Enjoy the rest of your day and I'll speak to you soon. Bye-bye everybody. Have you ever thought about starting your own podcast when I was trying to get my podcast, Success Made Simple, off the ground, I had so many questions. How do I record an episode? Where do I find background music? How do I get my show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and all the other places that people like to listen? Where do I find advertisers? The answer to every one of these questions is really simple. Anchor. 
Anchor is a one-stop shop for recording, hosting, distributing, and monetizing your podcast. And best of all, it's 100% free and 100% ridiculously easy to use. For me, I wanted to do something quick and simple. And if I have a thought in my mind, I can do a mini cast that's 8 to 10 minutes or even invite a guest on to do one with me. So if you've always wanted to start a podcast, go to anchor.fm slash start to join me and the diverse community of podcasters already using Anchor. That's anchor.fm slash start, and I can't wait to hear your podcast. So again, thank you so much for checking out today's episode. And if you can go over to Apple Podcasts or iTunes and leave me a five-star rating, write a review, and share this with anyone that you feel could benefit from this, I would be so, so grateful. And again, if you would like to learn more about LinkedIn and how I can personally assist you in growing your network marketing business, head over to www.scotterron.net and schedule a free 15-minute coaching session with me today. Have a great day, and I'll see you guys next time.